be stoked. Hey there, welcome to the channel. First, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us down the road and helping us get to our first milestone with subscribers. We've got a special thank you that I'll fill you in on in a bit. We've been traveling all over Oregon and we're taking you to some beautiful places in upcoming videos. It's awesome what you see on the way. Does anybody else's truck look like this? Like a tourist, taking pictures of an obsidian pit on the roadside. Gotta love it. After enthusiastically digging the Aurora pit at Glass Butte, I'm back at home in the laboratory, ready to polish this find. Before I take this to the flat lap, I need to trim it. I'm without a trim saw at the moment, so I'm using a 60 grit diamond coated piano wire in my jeweler's saw to cut the material. If you saw my stone knife handle video, you already know that this isn't easy. But if you don't have all the tools, it doesn't need to stop you. I often do things low tech until I can get all the suitable tools. One of the upsides to using the hand saw is the control. You can saw a straight line or you can saw curves and shapes. I've got some Australian boulder opal coming and I'll use this to get into the ironstone where the opal seams flow like rainbow rivers. And sometimes they're pretty disorganized. The cut's all done. That wasn't so bad. When you cut rainbow or sheen obsidian, the angle of your color to the cut is important. When you're looking at this piece, you can see the sheen illuminated by the light source. You can plan your project by marking the apex of the sheen or rainbow action and cutting parallel to it. This can take some practice with obsidian, finding the most advantageous angle. My cut is such that I need to grind down the corner or ridge on the back. Enter the high-tech flat lap. I'm starting with a 100 grit diamond disc. Obsidian is only a five to six on the Mohs hardness scale. So a 100 grit diamond is plenty to melt this obsidian like butter on a pancake. I'm just getting the excess rock off just to get my shape going. An unplanned event that you can expect to sometimes have happen is a break. Better to have this happen now during shaping. And here's the shape now. Like when breaks happen, I like to let the stone tell me what shape it wants to be. This is turning out to be a lovely long teardrop. I've put the obsidian on a dop stick to hold on to. If you want to know more about dopping, Check out Agate Enchantment and Rock Wizardry's latest video on it. Info is in the description. I used the 180 grit diamond disc to finesse the shape. The 100 is like an angry chihuahua with a nasty bite and hard scratches to get out. You want to make sure to tame them before you go on to the brown 320 grit diamond disc. You'll notice I'm constantly moving the stone. It keeps facets from happening. Even little flat spots will make it difficult or impossible to get a clean polish. There's some tiny facets on my stone. So polishing is essentially removing scratches with finer abrasives, then removing those scratches with finer abrasives. You're finished with the brown disc and ready for the red 600 grit disc when you can't see any facets or scratches on your piece. Also. Finishing the shaping on the sides of your cabochon with a mind for the jeweler's setting is done. The red disc is like the magic eraser for me. You stop seeing the clouds and scratches and start seeing what the stone is really going to look like polished. The blue disc or 1200 grit is the last of the pre-polish. When you've done this, the light should flow over the piece without dull spots, divots, or skips. It should even shine when it's dry. You can check your work with the jeweler's loop for scratches if you want a perfect finish. Looking good. I 
I'm using a cerium oxide embedded disc for the polish. Cerium oxide is a great alternative to diamond paste for obsidian and opal. Obsidian is also a great practice stone if you're getting ready to lab opal, as it behaves a lot like it and is a ton cheaper. I'll be making a video with that boulder opal that's in the mail now as soon as it gets here. I mentioned in the beginning a special thank you. Well, here's the deal. I think it's going to be super fun to design a piece of jewelry around this. And when I'm done, I'm going to give it away. By request, I'm going to make a video of making this into a piece of jewelry. Many of you have been asking for some tools and techniques. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's how you get two shots at winning and here's how. Subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below about anything you love about rocks or rock hounding. And when I post the next video, you can do that again. I'll take the names of the comments and I'll put them all in a hat and pick a winner. So that way you can double down. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you have questions or if you have your own tips for me on polishing obsidian, definitely leave it in the comments. For more information, check us out at ozonefineart.com and on Instagram. Keep creating and see you soon.